Yeah, so hi, 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 my crow punter here. And today I want to try something slightly different. Uh, today I want, yeah, here, now we've got full screen. Um, I want to do live streams. Um, it's been the request uh, by a few of my viewers uh, to do live streams. Uh, but I have to tell you, I did not quite feel very self-confident yet. So what I decided to do today is uh, simply try to record it as a normal YouTube video first and also to get a little bit of the technology and all of the technological hurdles sorted out. Um, as you've already seen before here, look, I'd let me switch around. Yeah, what you can see now is, is the background. That is uh, the stuff uh, under the microscope. Okay, so I'm turning... Uh, the light um, up and down now. And what I would like to do is I would like uh, to prepare um, a few specimen slides. Um, I would like uh, to put it under the microscope and uh, yeah, this, I hope that this way you're going to get a more authentic um, impression of uh, what microscopy um, is all about. If you think that I'm talking a little bit too slowly or if you want to skip ahead, um, then in YouTube, uh, YouTube does allow you to increase uh, the playback speed, um, of course. Uh, and if you like uh, these type of videos, then of course I would like to encourage you to please subscribe uh, to this channel because uh, if a lot of people like uh, this video here and subscribe to it, then this actually shows uh, that I can do more of these videos in the future. Now all of a sudden people start unsubscribing. <laughs> then this is of course a sign that uh, probably was not so much appreciated. Um, yeah. So um, in any case, what I wanna do is just have a couple of water samples here. Uh, some of them are kind of old, um, a few months old already. Um, and uh, let me move this over here, okay. Um, and. Uh, Water has been, of course, evaporating, so I always added a little bit more water. And, and over the months, uh, of course, uh, the number and type of microorganisms in those water samples has changed. And uh, we're just gonna have a look at it. And uh, yeah, basically, I don't know what to expect, okay? Well, I know a little bit uh, what to expect, uh, but uh, um, so uh, I use a, a pipette, it's a disposable pipette. And uh, what I do is I simply yeah, take up a little bit of the sample here. And uh, you already know that all you have to do is, is add a little bit of the water here. Uh, I want to have a little more, some, some of the more solid material as well. So maybe, maybe this here, okay? Because sometimes the microorganisms are actually um, connected or attached uh, to solid. Um, to solid material. Yeah, I'm using cover glasses. Uh, I already forgot those here. Um, you see maybe that, I don't know if you can see this well. Uh, that these cover glasses are pretty large, okay? Um, yeah, here, now in the reflection, you can actually see it much better, okay? Um, those cover glasses are pretty large. I like to use them because, um, yeah, I do not want the objective to touch uh, the water which is on the side. And if uh, the cover glass is quite large, uh, then of course, uh, now the objective is in the center, then of course, uh, this means that the objective is uh, protected um, a little bit and will not uh, become wet. Yeah, and what I'm gonna do now is simply, I'm going to yeah, switch uh, over to both here and uh, I'm going to put this now um, under the microscope and I'm going to go full screen first. This is now the 10 times magnifying um, objective. Uh, here we have right in the middle of an air bubble. <laughs> okay, so let's increase the light intensity a little bit here. Yeah, let's move over here and uh, do a little bit of focusing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's basically what I see. Not a lot of movement. Um, so I have to find something interesting right now. This might take a little bit of time. Yeah, there is there's something moving here. Okay. Um, I used to see some Vorticella here and some Rotifers. Again, uh, it's not a, a lot of uh, stuff going on here. Uh, but we have to be patient and uh, this is basically the very purpose of a live stream um, that essentially we need to improvise a little bit and then sometimes we're lucky and sometimes we're a little bit less lucky. Again, this is not live, it's a trial, a trial video, but honestly I have to admit I am a little bit disappointed indeed. No, yes, here we go. This here is of course a rotifer in the middle, um, those guys are quite common. So I'm going to do the following. I'm just going to increase uh, the magnification a little bit. Now I'm going to 20 times with a 20 times objective. Maybe increase the intensity as well a little bit. Okay, so let's open the condenser a little bit. The camera always readjusts the, the camera does always readjust the exposure time. Yeah. 
So rotifers are multicellular animals, they're micro-animals, and uh, the, of, there are many different species, of course, and uh, within the species, the adults have the same number of cells. So they are multicellular, and the thing that kind of fascinates me always is, is that some ciliates, like for example paramecia, are not that much smaller, even though they are made of one single cell. Yeah. They have a foot, so they're connected uh, to um, yeah, the surface on a foot, and on the head, maybe you've seen this, there is a, a ring of cilia. The cilia are a little beating here, and they use that to collect food. Yeah, it's always moving out of focus, you, you see that? Yeah? This is actually a sign that I should have used a little bit uh, less water because this would have restricted the movement uh, of uh, this little animal. But I'm going to go higher yet uh, simply because I want to have a closer look um, at, the, yeah, at the head uh, where you see the cilia. Uh, it's very difficult. Yeah? So, it's moving um, not only horizontally but also vertically. This means uh, that not everything is in focus all the time. So I'm chasing it around. Yeah, but that is essentially the, yeah, that's in the nature of microscopy. Yeah. Uh, this is not, not, not so easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, so it extends outwards, uh, looks for food, and then retracts again. Yeah. So maybe you can see the movement uh, of the cilia right now. No, I'm going to go back down with uh, the magnification again to 20 times uh, 20x uh, because you not only have a greater depth of field, but also a better overview of, of what's going on, especially if you don't know yet what you want to look at. If you're searching, then it's of course much better. And here's another one. Yeah. Here's another one. Yeah. So you see the foot right now can be seen quite nicely it almost looks like a suction cup uh, um, where it attaches uh, to the glass slide or the cover glass. Okay, so ah, now it's floating away. Here it is again. Yeah, I do also want to talk a little bit about uh, biology as such, uh, not only about the things that we see here under the microscope. Um, I'm interested also a little bit in the history of science. And uh, in the, back in the 19th century, um, of course, microscopy was already pretty established. There are, there were, um, there was a discussion going on among the scientists because they wanted to figure out and they wanted to know what is life, what what's life, what characterizes life. And there were essentially at that time there were two different um, viewpoints, two opposing viewpoints, um, and uh, one group of people they said living things are distinguished uh, from non-living things by a so-called a vital force, a force of life. This uh, concept was called vitalism. So basically living things, living organisms, they had this force of life and non-living things, they didn't. There is only, uh, this was one, one of those uh, aspects. And the second thing, um, the second part uh, was that uh, was the idea that only, or the hypothesis rather, the only, mm, on, only living things, I have to reformulate, only living things are able to produce organic substances. This was the idea. Organic substances, uh, remember, are those substances that um, contain carbon. Ah, look, look, look here, a heliozoan. Look at this. Can you see the spikes? Okay. It's called a heliozoan, a sun animal cule. So um, yeah, so only that's, uh, the idea was that only or the, um, the only um, uh, organisms, only living things, are able to make uh, organic substances. And so the force of life and the ability to make organic substances; these are the characteristics of living things. And uh, yeah, there are there are a couple of problems with that. Problem number one with the vit with the force of life, the vital force. The problem there is is that um, yeah, how do you want to measure that? What is it? What units are you going to use to describe it? It's scientifically not accessible, the force of life, because it was too vaguely defined. What is it actually that you're looking for? And so if it's not scientifically accessible, then that's of course a problem. And the second issue is, is the whole thing with the organic substances, that only living things are able to produce organic substances. Friedrich Möhrer, a German chemist, 
he was the first person who to artificially make an organic substance in the laboratory out of inorganic substances. So essentially this uh, concept was actually proven wrong. And then later on in the I think 1950s or 60s, forgot, <laughs> they also managed uh, to make uh, um, amino acids artificially out of uh, inorganic precursors, or at least out of uh, simpler, I think methane must have also been a part there. But in any case, uh, they were able to also make more complex uh, organic substances um, out of uh, yeah, simpler ones. And so essentially uh, the concept of vitalism is now considered an outdated, an outdated dated idea. And the other view was uh, the mechanical viewpoint, essentially that uh, idea that uh, organisms can be described and life can be described entirely from an organical um, uh, viewpoint and that is also a little bit outdated because uh, it does not uh, consider enough this mechanistic view at least does not consider enough the complexities of life and the abilities to self-organize so nowadays uh, the view of life is, is more of a systems perspective yeah? Then, uh, of course, it's a, it's a rotifer, and yeah, then you see here um, a 40 times uh, magnifying objective. Yeah. Yeah, so, living things are yeah, ba basically both viewpoints the vitalistic viewpoint and also the me mechanistic viewpoint both, both have their uh, disadvantages. However, these days, of course, uh, we try to understand the living processes a lot using chemistry, but uh, simply to say life is nothing more than a complicated chemical reaction also kind of falls short a little bit okay so yeah so this was uh, essentially the view of the two different views of of, of, of life um, and i'm going to go down again with the magnification a little bit so maybe i was actually hoping to find a a, a morticella uh, yeah i saw one just uh, today in the morning ah a flagellate okay that, that's another one. Um, there are ciliates and there are flagellates. Uh, ciliates, they have a lot of many small beating here um, on the surface. And this here is a flagellate. Um, there is, if you look very carefully, maybe you're able to see one flagellum, which is the line extending outwards, uh, very finely visible. Uh, so that's a it's called a flagellum. And it pulls the rest of the cell. Oh, no, it disappears. I hope it's gonna reappear. And I see an amoeba. Oh, look on the lower lower left hand corner okay cool 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 here it is and amoeba as well um, so i'm going to go up to 60 times so that is an amoeba let me open the condenser a little bit give it more light very nice okay so 60 times uh, objective you can see the cell organelles moving around and so so obviously movement uh, of course is also one of those characteristics of life but not everything that moves is alive of course uh, but uh, especially when we look under the microscope uh, then of course movement is one of the most uh, prominent characteristics especially complex movement and also the ability of uh, those organisms to respond to their environment so for example when you see a cell moving into one direction and it bumps against something else and then it reverses direction and this is an indication that um, it responds uh, to the environment. And so movement and response are two of, of the characteristics. Many years ago when I was still at university, one of the first biology lessons, super interesting stuff, um, we discussed for a whole lesson, what is life? The professor at that time said the, the question of what life is, is is one of the most complicated or difficult questions in, in biology. Interesting, we biologists, we do deal with living things, that's what we study, and we have a, such a big problem of actually saying what is life. He said the problem is, is, is that uh, when we try to define life, when we say what well, life is, and then you have a definition, you're not allowed to do that from a philosophical standpoint, because we ourselves are considered alive, and by defining what life is, we would define ourselves. Means, uh, it's called a tautology, you're going in cycles, you're not allowed to, def to define yourself. It's almost like in a dictionary when you have a definition that uses the own word that it tries to define. It doesn't really help you out, right? 
So the, the more modern view of, of dealing with the life is, is, is to have a list of characteristics and the movement and uh, also the response to the environment uh, are two characteristics. There are more, for example, reproduction is one. All living things reproduce. Yeah. Of, of course, also uh, metabolism, very important. Metabolism is referred to the sum of all chemical reactions in a cell. And again, of course, this begs the question, how complicated does a chemical reaction have to be to be considered me metabolism? Look, look how it rearranges the direction right now. Okay. Pretty fascinating, okay? If I were to show this to you now on, uh, yeah, in one of my other YouTube videos, then of course I would uh, um, increase the contrast. Um, I would um, yeah, do a, some color corrections and all of these things. I cannot do that now because uh, I'm just recording it directly. I hope uh, yeah, you, you don't, uh, you're not surprised too much. I'm telling you this so that you're not surprised too much why the image quality might not quite be um, as good um, as um, when with my other YouTube videos. And it's because I'm simply not uh, improving the image quality, but I think you get the idea here. Okay. Yeah, it's an amoeba again for those of you who just joined in. Well, that was a stupid comment because I'm not live streaming right now. I'm <laughs> recording. Yeah, so essentially the yeah, characteristics um, of, of, uh, of life, uh, movement, response to environment, metabolism, the ability, uh, for example, nutrition, you have to take up, they have to take up food in a form or make their own food yeah. and production of waste. Yeah. Some people also uh, include evolution. So the ability to change their uh, g uh, genes um, over generations. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm just gonna show you some other interesting things as well. I mean, you got the idea of an amoeba. Usually amoeba, um, I like to do time-lapse videos because uh, this actually yeah, makes it more pronounced, the, the movement. So let's have a look, another look somewhere. Yeah, so the characteristics of life. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, the question now is, of course, how many characteristics of life do you need? <laughs> To, for something to be considered alive. I mean, I can say that my wristwatch, I've got a small digital wristwatch, I can say that, that this one moves, right? And it responds to the environment because uh, when I press a button, then you know, I've got the backlight of the LCD display. Yeah, that's again the heliozoan. This movement, uh, there are, uh, yeah, the battery, uh, the energy is, is required, uh, the chemical reactions happening in, uh, because the battery providing uh, providing energy, yeah, that's a chemical reaction here. Here, that's another heliozoan. It's going a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, did you see it? Look at the spikes. They even they move a little bit. So, you see that it's um, yeah, um, also a little bit uh, yeah. So, is my wristwatch half alive because it only has uh, some of the characteristics? <laughs> you see, it's uh, yeah. If you start thinking about it, then things become a little bit complicated. Yeah. Here, what is this? Ah, it's another rotifer again. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, once seen that those spikes, uh, uh, this helium zone seemed to have caught uh, another cell, uh, which got entangled in, in, in those uh, spikes. But I've not really seen it very well, so I wasn't quite sure whether, whether this is actually a method of uh, the heliozoans to catch organisms is to kind of, uh, to impale them, you know. <laughs> yeah, so let's have another look here. Yeah. I think this seems to be a diatom here um, in, in the middle. Mm. Okay, so where did I leave off? Yeah, the characteristics of life. Yeah. Um, growth, I already mentioned. Oxygen requirement is not a characteristic because there are indeed uh, certain so-called anaerobic uh, organisms, uh, bacteria, certain prokaryotes. As a matter of fact, uh, if you expose them to oxygen, they die. They are obligatorily um, anaerobic. Uh, but uh, the higher organisms, uh, they require, of course, all of them require oxygen. So I think I'm going to go down again with the magnification a little bit to get a better overview. Okay. Yeah. So you also see the advantage of, uh, of a large cover class because there's simply more area that uh, you can view. 
Yeah, here again, um, Rotifer. What is this? Ah, that is again a flagellate. Okay, so here we see it again. The flagellum is now quite well visible. Let me go higher again. Here it is. Again, flagellates, they have this one long extension. Um, like an extension, the flagellum. And here again, it's hiding a little bit uh, behind the other debris. But I was able to see the flagellum quite well. Okay. No, so not not the one on the right, but the one that's hiding here. Ah, unfortunate, unfortunate. Okay, it's hiding here, right in the middle. I think uh, it actually shows that maybe I should uh, superimpose an arrow or a circle so that uh, I can point it much better. So again, not the one that's moving on top now, but the one on the bottom. And I was just able to see the flagellum very well. Now it's uh, covered up by, yeah, again, uh, among, uh, again, a single celled uh, organism, uh, the flag uh, flagellates, they have one or two long flagella that are extending and uh, they basically pull the rest of the cell. And ciliates, for example, paramecia belong to them. They have uh, many tiny little hair um, yeah, on the body. And, then, and all of them kind of move, move the cell along. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm, I think I'm just, uh, it's always, yeah, I mean, that's the authentic experience. Uh, maybe we're just able to see it. It's a long whip-like uh, structure extending outwards. Yep. Okay. Okay. This one here, um, seem, that's a ciliate. Okay. The one here, moving around. Okay. You know, okay, I'll, I'll go out uh, again with the magnification a little bit. Actually, yeah. this water sample, again, there are a whole bunch of uh, things that I did not see before. So it does change um, in composition, of course. Yeah, but you see, most of the time there is not much to be seen. Maybe I'm going to... Ah! Castro trick. Look at this guy. Okay, again, a slightly larger magnification. Look at this. Yeah, it's moving in and out of focus, uh, therefore I have to always refocus. So again, um, this is the authentic uh, microscopy experience. Um, in my other YouTube videos, they're all edited, so I only show you those parts that are in focus all the time. Um, I don't... Uh, m I try not to move uh, the, the slide too much. Uh, but uh, right now, this is the more authentic experience. Um, and many of those uh, organisms indeed are um, yeah, connected, or they like, not connected, they like to live uh, around uh, solid material because that is, of course, also the food source. So if you want to observe a water sample yourself, do not just put a clear water sample on your microscope slide, but do take some solid material along as well. Okay. because uh, you know, they like uh, to be associated with this. Here we go, up, I need to refocus. Up, where is it? Yep. Did it just poop? Okay. <laughs> yeah, production of waste. That is also one of those characteristics uh, of life. And the interesting thing really is, is <laughs> Uh, that's something that's uh, for people who hear, it, who hear it the first time. It's really uh, surprising, and it was again a rotifer. Yeah? Is is actually we are quite similar on that level, we humans, uh, to microorganisms because we share the same characteristics of life. And we have a metabolism. We are made of cells. You know, we reproduce. We grow. We produce wastes. All of these things we share. All living things share them. So on that level, we're very related or very similar, at least, uh, um, to all other living things, including bacteria. They do the same thing. We respond to the environment as well. Okay. So uh, now it's extending vertically. That's why part of it is, is out of focus. Okay. Yeah, you get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chasing it around. Yeah. 
that's uh, also one of the advantages of a mechanical stage really um, is uh, if, uh, is that it's easier for you to to observe those water samples yeah uh, you know what I'm gonna do now I'm, I'm going to um, um, yeah here here I am <laughs> um, I'm going to now put another water sample um, under the microscope and uh, let's have a look um, at a second one okay so um, let's uh, go down here again Let's take a new slide. Um, I already cleaned those slides. So usually, when they come out of the box directly, they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit grimy and slimy. I also want to show you something else here. What I have, this is a so-called a microliter pipette, uh, yeah, which was normally they're pretty expensive. This one was uh, pretty cheap. No, again, I'm not, sp I'm not sponsoring, <laughs> sponsored by the company. I just uh, bought it a few days ago out of nostalgia because I used them um, a lot uh, when I did. Uh, my, microbiolo my microbiology studies at university. And, um, it's kind of convenient. You can uh, adjust the, the volume here by turning um, this here on, on the back, right? So I adjusted this now to 500, uh, 500 uh, microliters, which is half a milliliter, which is way too much anyway right now. Um, and if you uh, press uh, this button here, yeah, then you're ejecting this one here, okay? Then you're ejecting the tip, okay? It's a, it's a disposable tip. I'm not just going to dispose of it. I'm just going to clean it and reuse it because it doesn't have to be sterile because usually they are sterile. And there are two pressure points. Okay, the first one, yeah, to take up and to release the sample. And the second one, okay, to completely push out the rest of the water because usually there's a small amount of water hanging on, on, yeah, on the tip still. So I'm just going to show this to you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be trying this one here. Yeah. You pr pr push down to the first pressure point, okay? And then you, yeah, take up a water sample, okay? And if you want to release the water, you push it again back to the first pressure point, but there's still a little bit of water here, and so you have to push it all the way out. Second pressure point, okay? Yeah. So, but uh, for our purposes, this doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do usually, why I bought this also, this is because um, by drawing the water in and out, I don't know if you're able to see this, I'm resuspending the cells that might be in there a little bit, and uh, yeah. I'm just going to apply a small amount here. I don't know what I'll, I'll be able to see. I really don't know. Okay, so maybe it's going to be the most boring sample. The rest I simply push out again. The second pressure point. Oh yeah, um, I totally forgot. Uh, let's go full screen, of course. <laughs> see, I totally forgot to change this. Uh, let's move this away. Again, I'm going to be using a cover glass. I'm going to be using the large one. Okay, and yeah. So um, let's try to simply put it under the microscope directly. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to remove the slide again. So this was the first one. Let's take this here. Let's go full screen. And okay, change. Always start with the lower magnifications first. And if I don't find anything, ah, I spilled some water on the stage, doesn't matter. It's, everything's completely out of focus. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, lots of, I don't know if these are already bacteria or not, or if these are indeed uh, smaller eukaryotic organisms. Uh, if you look very carefully, you can see a lot of movement here. I need to go up with the magnification a little bit. So as you can see, again, uh, quite different uh, characteristics uh, of the water sample. And uh, those microbes, whatever they are, they share the same characteristics of life. But I do see something that looks like a flagellum here as well. I don't know if the, the camera is able to resolve it uh, quite well. No, these are flagellates. Must be. Because I, I do, um, I also am able to see some of the cell organelles. Um, bacteria are completely homogenous. So they basically, they must be eukaryotes. Okay. Uh, okay. I me completely messed it up here. I'm just going to show you on, on, um, on the webcam like the problem. Okay. Why a slide should be dry. Okay. Look, uh, it's a little bit out of focus, but maybe you get the idea. Okay. But uh, there's some water that spilled over. Okay. From the cover glass. There's a disadvantage if the cover glass is too large. Uh, and uh, when I operate the mechanical stage, yeah, you see the cover, the, the, the slide sticks uh, to, the, to the stage. 
I know it's out of focus now, okay? So I have to remove this, um, otherwise I'm not able to, uh, to do this properly. But, but again, I, I, as, as I promised you, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, <laughs> I'm doing this uh, uh, live and improvised. So at least, uh, so I have to get some tissue paper, of course. And where is it? Here it is. Okay, got some tissue paper and uh, let's start uh, cleaning this a little bit. And um, of course, um, also the bottom side of the slide must be cleaned um, as well. Okay. So, of course, uh, let me talk a little bit about a few other things here. Of course, uh, scientists uh, then also kind of wondered a little bit is, uh, is uh, are living things able to um, form on their own? This was kind of the question. Are living, are, um, are microorganisms, and let me just go again to the to full screen, are microorganisms able to form on their own out of non-living things? And so this concept is called spontaneous generation. This means that the idea that you have a non-living material um, and uh, then if you wait long enough, life is going to emerge. I mean, this must have happened, obviously, um, right at the beginning uh, when the first cells emerged. But uh, the question is, is, is this possible nowadays as well? And so there was also a scientific debate uh, about that. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here, okay, using now tweezers. And, yeah. and it was Louis Pasteur, a French uh, scientist, uh, who essentially then conducted a conclusive experiment, and a decisive experiment, that uh, showed that the living things can only come from pre-existing living things. Okay, spontaneous generation does not happen. And so he basically, uh, he closed off uh, a container with a nutrient medium and uh, he was able to show that as long as the container is closed off, air was able to go in, that was important, uh, but uh, bacteria and other microorganisms could not reach the inside of the nutrient medium and uh, life did not form. So he decisively has proven that spontaneous generation does not happen. Yeah. There are a whole bunch of bubbles now. It does seem to be a little bit thicker. Okay. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's have a look here. Okay. So I'm going to put this again on, under the microscope here. And uh, yes, here we go. And I go full screen again. Ah, this seems to be a little bit more interesting. Look, I mean, I don't know what these uh, round circular structures are. By the way, this is uh, 20 times of objective. Of course, a rotifer over here, lots of diatoms. Um, yeah, cellular debris. Another rotifer, another rotifer. Uh, don't don't forget uh, th these water samples are pretty old, okay? So when you take uh, fresh water from a pond or a river, maybe using a plankton net, uh, you will again see a lot of different things here. Okay, so this here is again a ciliate here in the center. Let's turn up the light a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have? Yeah. So I have to move a, a focus back and forth a little bit. And, uh, and those round structures, uh, I don't know what they are, uh, but you find them quite often. Yeah, about the diatoms, uh, these are the, uh, mostly we see empty diatom shells. Diatoms are, are made out of a silica shell. So in other words, they're chemically similar to glass. Uh, they have a very regular structure. Yeah? These are the smaller, almost clear things that you see here on the background. And uh, I, I go up uh, yet higher. Okay, so this is now with the 60 times. Yeah, so these are all the these are all diatom shells that you see here. Hmm? And uh, yeah, let's go out. I don't like to use the high magnification too much. Those round structures I've seen so often, I don't know what they are. Okay, the one that's right now in the center. Yeah, and so Louis Pasteur, he basically has then decisively proven that uh, spontaneous generation does not exist. And uh, we are still using this, uh, his uh, ideas and concepts to preserve food. So 
for example, food that is stored in a tin can. Mm, it can be stored for many months. And the reason is because there are no microorganisms inside the tin can. It's completely sterile. But as soon as you open it, uh, new uh, microorganisms from the air, bacteria and so on, will fall into it. And then you have to eat up uh, the food within a short time or at least refrigerate it. Otherwise, uh, the number of microorganisms, they're going to find a good food source and they're going to multiply and divide a lot. So for example, look at uh, this uh, diatom right now in the middle, right now in the center, which is a little bit larger. You see that there are um, the shell is structured. Um, so sometimes diatoms are also used to uh, determine or to test the quality of microscope objectives if you're able to see the fine structures um, of certain diatoms. So I'm using the 40 times uh, um, objective right now. Okay. That's usually the highest that uh, you normally want to go anyway. Huh? You see that there are so many things that you can already see. Yeah. And with this here at the top, okay, here, another, uh, another ciliate here. Again, the fast moving ciliates, uh, uh, yeah, at high magnification is difficult because you have to chase them around. So, yeah, let's go down with the magnification a little bit again. And here, again, a rotifer. Yeah, there's a vortex here. What's what's causing the vortex? Ah, a rotifer here. Very nice. Uh, you can see now the the cilia of the rotifer and the vortex that it generates. So here, I am going to go a little bit higher again to place a strong emphasis on this. Very nice. Look at this. Okay. Look at the this the part. Uh, look how the rotifer is, is moving the water and how all of the particles in the water uh, are moving in a circle in a vortex. Uh, so I'll just show you the whole animal here. Uh, here it is. Connected to the surface with a foot and here generating a nice vortex. Um, there are different, obviously, <laughs> there are different types of vorticella around. And uh, this means that uh, some of them actually have uh, uh, two little, looks like two little heads almost. Uh, but these are simply two rings of, uh, of cilia. And um, others don't have that, or at least not so visible. Yeah. So here again, on, on the right side, a ciliate. Okay, well, I think uh, you get the idea. Let's, uh, Go out again here a little bit. What else do we have? Again, Rotifer, 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 Rotifer. Rotifers, I made a separate YouTube video um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Rotifers are mostly only female. Um, they haven't found males and uh, they reproduce uh, by uh, parthenogenesis. genesis. This means that there's an unfertilized egg cell and uh, this unfertilized egg cell then will develop into an, an adult rotifer. And so scientists were kind of worried. So why, why is that? Why do they not? Why do they almost exclusively reproduce asexually? And, uh, because as the point of sexual reproduction in nature is to ensure that every generation is different, is genetically different from the previous generation. That's the point of sexual reproduction. You find it pretty much everywhere in nature. And uh, why don't they do that? Um, the reason why every generation has to be different from the previous one genetically is so that uh, the species as such is able to adapt better to a changing environment. The environment is never uh, static, it, it always changes. And uh, if the species is to survive, then um, the species has to genetically adapt uh, to a changing environment. And uh, one way of doing that is, is, is by uh, sexual reproduction. And now if they do not uh, reproduce sexually, how do you ensure that there is genetic diversity in the species? And they found out is what they do is something called horizontal gene transfer. So they will take up foreign DNA and incorporate it into their own DNA. So they have basically a, a, a workaround, so to say. And this allows them to reproduce mostly asexually. Also bacteria, for example, I mean, they, um, they also have the, uh, an incredible ability to take up uh, DNA, foreign DNA, and incorporate it into their own DNA. 
And then if they have an evolutionary advantage, uh, then these uh, individuals will have a higher chance of surviving. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of fascinating. Uh, yeah. But maybe that's something that I just want to share with you. The purpose of sexual reproduction is the long-term survival of a species. And sexual reproduction can be found in plants, animals, of course, even mi microorganisms. For example, paramecia, what they will do is, is they will um, exchange uh, one of their nuclei. The nuclei they uh, contains uh, the DNA, and there are several so a macronuclei and a micronuclei, and one of them is exchanged uh, with, uh, yeah, in, in a process of called conjugation with, uh, with, a second, uh, with a second cell. Yeah, so that is uh, basically, uh, wow, how long have I been talking right now? Um, I look at the time. Oh, 14 minutes, I cannot believe this. At the beginning when I started off, I was kind of worried that I might not, be ha might not have uh, so many things to say. But, yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do simply now is I'm just going to call it quits. And But before I do that, I would like to ask you, please do leave your comments behind. I don't know if you like uh, uh, these style of videos. Um, if I'm going to do a real live stream, then of course uh, I would be able to see comments from you. Um, of course I cannot see that now. Wow, here, that was quite nicely visible now. Yeah. Um, I cannot see comments uh, from you uh, right now because um, this is not this is pre-recorded. I'm, I'm kind of testing out the system a little bit. There's not much going on here. Yeah. Uh, subscribe to it, uh, to the channel, please, if you're new here. And uh, if you kind of like these videos, um, and uh, please do subscribe. Why? Because this is a signal for me that you like these type of videos. Because what I do is, is I check the videos and I check uh, which videos have more subscribers. And um, not only views, but also subscribers. And if there are a lot of subscribers uh, for a certain video, then I know that uh, this type of video is something that you like to see. Um, and uh, so it's an important, uh, it's an important uh, piece of information for me. Okay. Uh, so yeah, here there are two of them here. Look at this, very nice. Okay, um, I'm going to switch back to here. Here I am again. Maybe I should buy myself a second webcam, okay? Um, I'm just going to leave it at uh, that uh, right now. Um, let, yeah, let's, put, let's put the two rotifers nicely into position for the goodbye. <laughs> um, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.